Last question. You said this in one of your interviews that you have a plan that if you release it, mm -hmm. it'll crash a bunch of the casinos. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Can you give me something about that? I understand you're not going to give out all the information, but a rough idea of what this is. There's actually a uh, two, there's a plan from two different angles. One is actively being done. It's in like early stages, but it's like active. And the other one is we started addressing it about six months ago. And I would say we're probably 60 days out from making a decision to follow through or not. And if we do, it'll be a long process, long process. A multi-year process? To see it come to light, I would say one year from start. To see it come to an end, you probably have to add two years to it. So three years. And that will actually involve casinos going out of business. Okay. Now, a lot of these casinos are public corporations. Sure. They're owned by the shareholders. Sure. The days of the mafia running Vegas is a thing of the past. Okay. By the way, Casino is one of my favorite movies. Me too. Of all time. I have huge sentiment to that movie. Not even gambling related, just in my life, the way that movie played a role. It's, yeah. well, my favorite Scorsese film ever. Yeah. People I like say Goodfellas, I say Casino. I like Casino a lot. Is there still a gangster element to some of these casinos? So, for example, if you go and do this and a casino actually goes out of business or is about to go out of business because of something you did, do you worry about just disappearing one day? Yeah, I've been worried about it for a long time. When I say worry, I don't mean worry like I'm scared of it, worried like uh, uh, trying to prepare for it. Like I said, I've been trying to die my whole life, so I, I don't really shy away from confrontation or consequence. Uh, I just want to be prepared for it. Okay. Have you ever been threatened by a casino or has there been anything of that, you know, of that type of thing happening? So I never been, my life was never threatened formally from a casino executive. That's not what happened. They've threatened to do a lot of things, a lot of damage in my life. Such as? Um, I have this one on video. The president of MGM International sent his right hand man to have a meeting with me where they're, I sent them nine and a half million dollars to put on my account and they tried to not just rob the nine and a half million, but then also an extra million. And it's all recorded. And they also told me they were gonna do things such as report me to the IRS, right? Now that by itself, I was fine. I was, I, my taxes are, I overpay taxes. I mean, I am worried about that. My taxes are actually really, as a professional gambler, my taxes are so cut and dry, it's so simple. Oh yeah, man, you have to pay your taxes. Have you ever been audited before? Never been audited. Once you've been audited, you know to pay your taxes from that, that point on. I mean, I, I got out of that audit fairly well. I actually even made some money back. That's good. But going through it, you yeah. realize how it works and what not to do. And so how yeah, much everyone you could, pays, pays And how much taxes. you could shake your whole life up going through an audit with the IRS. Oh, no. For months, I had to find every piece of paperwork I could possibly find and, right. and be prepared for it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, pay your taxes. So, they threatened to get the IRS on you, but that's I know not a that threat, it, really. Oh, I know that it was like a fallacy. Like there would be no findings. I wouldn't get in trouble, right? Yeah. They just wanted to shake my life up any way they could. And this is a particular threat that they that we have on camera. Hmm. It almost reminds me, remember uh, that scene in Casino where the the Asian guy won a bunch of money? And they tell, and then, they pay uh, off the yeah, pilot he, to say the plane's broke yeah, in. Yeah, he was trying try to get back on his plane and they're like, oh, the plane's down, but come back to the casino. We'll comp you a room. Yeah. You know, and, and he lost know. the money back plus three exactly. million. He was winning two million. Yeah. They paid the pilot off to say the plane was broken. Yes. They bring him back to the casino. He loses the two million uh, plus his own three million, I think. Yeah. Does that type of thing happen? Do casinos do these kind of dirty tricks when they That's lose big? That's light work. That's barely the tip of the iceberg huh it goes so dark and so deep that i can sit here for hours just telling you okay so give an example of when you've won big with the casino what type of dirty things they've done to try to get their money back i'll give you one example where i had to get my lawyer involved so i won a whole bunch of money and it was between two casinos and i was doing a chip transfer what that means is two companies unrelated 
instead of making me go to each one of the cages, get cash, go to the other location, deposit the cash, gamble there, they will just let me take each both companies' chips to either casino I wanted. They'd confirm on the back end, yes, I'm accepting this amount of chips, and they would pay each other the balance on their own time. So they owed me a bunch of money. They went to cut me two checks, and it was missing a million dollars. And there's really no way to prove where that million dollars went other than one thing, that they didn't clear the chips from the counter at the time they handed me these checks. If they took the chips off and put it into a rack under the desk, there'd be no way for me to ever find this million dollars. But they handed me the checks, and I opened it right then and there, sight on scene, and they hadn't taken the chips off the counter. So when I counted all the chips, I go, you see that number right there? They go, yeah. And I go, we're missing a million bucks here. And they go, we don't know what to tell you. And they said, call the other casino. Call the other casino. They go, who has the chips? I go, they do. I go, so they go, how are we going to pay that million bucks? They got the chips. It became this huge circular thing, and I had to get my lawyer involved, and we got that million. How long did it take you to get that million back? I got it by the end of the day. Oh, quickly. As soon as my lawyer got involved. Yeah. They didn't want the smoke. They don't want that smoke. Right, because they say that the safest place in the world for your money is on a casino table. I mean, it's that really leave, hard to rob. Could, it's really hard to physically rob chips from a casino. I mean, it's happened, but like, it's really right. hard. You basically leave it there. You can walk away. I do, yeah. Go to a restaurant, go to the bathroom, go to the club, come back, and they'll be right there for you. I've left millions in chips completely unattended at tables for days at a time. Yeah. You've left millions yeah. well, on they, a table yeah. unattended. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Doesn't that sound kind of crazy, though? Well, this, this is the situation. I always play at reserve tables. So nobody's even allowed to approach my table. And if somebody tries to, staff has to say, you need to leave, this is private. So I already have that barrier. Also, when you have a reserve table, there has to be staff sitting at the table no matter what. So there's always multiple staff at that table, no matter how many days I might be gone from it, in case I decide to show up. And when I get up and leave, they put this big plastic box see-through over the chips. There's so many like lines that they would have to go through a thief to try to get a hold of those chips and make it out. Well, a thief, well, what about a staff member? You come back, there's a million dollars missing. I want to see the camera footage. Oh, sorry, the camera malfunctioned uh, today. Sorry, we don't have any of the footage. You're not wrong. And it has been a concern of mine. The only reason that I felt okay, first of all, I, don't, I stopped doing that stuff at some point. As my <laughs> distrust with them grew, I stopped doing those things. But every single staff member from top to bottom would have to be in cahoots. And that's a, I can't imagine that a casino who makes billions of dollars is going to try to rob me for one million and everybody has to be in on it and nobody say a word. Like that's, it just seemed too far-fetched. I go, these are like, some of them staff are regular people. They're not, li t you know, sealed lipped, you know, gangsters. They're not thieves. They're just people. Yeah, I could leave a million dollars on the table and just walk away. Uh, I'd have to take it with me, put it in a safe somewhere. I wouldn't even trust anyone to watch it, honestly. Well, I know something funny, actually. There's a guy, he's famous in poker. His name's JRB, real good friend of mine. Me and him played in a poker game on live TV. He won something in the realm of 1.8 million, right? I forget the exact number. This is on live TV. And I'm at the table playing as well. He lives in Vegas. We're playing in LA on TV. He wins whatever it is, 1.8 million. And he goes, oh, I got to get out of here. My, my plane leaves like in 30 minutes. He leaves the money there, doesn't say goodbye to anybody, gets on a plane and goes to Vegas. He phones into one of the other buddies at the table and goes, hey, I left whatever it is, 1.8 million. If you guys need a loan, because any of you guys end up losing, take the money, let me know who owes me back. Okay. And everything was yeah. above board? Yeah. We're all friends. In that regard, we're all friends. So if somebody lost, I think... Nobody needed it. I don't really remember if anybody ever took the money. I think maybe one guy took like 100K out of it, something like that. But we all know each other. And so that's it. We take them. And the casinos have crazy surveillance. They ended up taking the 1.8 at the end and just putting it in a box. And I think somebody just took his box out for him and just brought it back to Vegas and handed it to him. Well, you actually tell people not to gamble. Yeah, I definitely discourage gambling. Why is that? Well, we said earlier, man, these places exclusively are built on consumers losing money. It is a losing proposition. It is super rare to be a winner, and when you do win, you get banned and all that anyway. Almost everybody is going to lose. Well, right, I mean, mathematically, every game is geared to the house. Right. Right, period. Yeah. So yeah, you might have some winning hands, but over time, you will lose a certain percentage. Yeah, everyone's gonna end up being a net profit loser. Are there certain games 
that are better than others in terms of winning. People sure. like to say like roulette has a slightly better odds and stuff like that. Baccarat has the best odds. Baccarat has the best it's odds. It's roughly 49.5%. So you're almost at 50. Almost at 50. Yeah. Okay. What's the second best? I believe it's blackjack when you play correctly. Blackjack has a range, but I believe when you play correctly, it's second place. Okay, so roulette is not up there. I forget what roulette is. I more so play roulette for entertainment, not for profit. Got it. Because there's no real skill there. It's just... Yeah. Look, that game's also super easy to cheat, and I've caught casinos cheating roulette too. How do you cheat in roulette? Oh, it's so, there's so many ways, man. Bro, I post videos on my Instagram all the time of mechanics that casinos use to cheat, like all the time. So I know all these people around the world that help build some of this stuff. I've seen guys, I have a video of it, I put on my Instagram, where they popped off uh, the top of the roulette board to show you the motor underneath it to show you how it's controlled. So they can control where the ball lands. There's so there's so wow, many ways. Okay. Hey, I can show, actually, here's a really simple one. How about this? Really, really, really simple understanding. A roulette dealer does one motion, eight, day, eight hours a day, five days a week for 20 years. This is the motion. That's it. Spin the wheel, throw the ball. Spin the wheel, throw the ball. Just like Steph Curry. He hits huge percentage of his threes. Why can't this guy? Oh. I see what you're saying. So there's something that he could do that'll give a slight edge to the house. Or to the player. Or to the player, depending on the kind of day he's having. Depends on the kind of day he's having. Right, but if they actually exposed that mechanically something is going on, you have an organization like the Wind, let's say, they could lose their license. Well, You're talking so, about billions of dollars missing. Right. You never hear about, about any of this happening. Well, everybody knows. Like, everybody in the back end knows these mechanics exist. Like, it's not like a secret. It's not like Steve Wynn himself is, like, sneaking in at night and, like, you know, putting in, like, these mechanisms. Like, they just exist. It's how these machines and these tables and it's, it's just how it was made, built, manufactured, and delivered. Like, everybody knows what's happening. So the real question is, well, why would these public companies that make billions of dollars risk their license? They're risking their license to one group, and it's the Gaming Control Board. Well, if there was no casino, there's also no Gaming Control Board. So the Gaming Control Board, it's like the bad guys policing the bad guys. Hmm. What are you talking about? Wow, okay. They only made a Gaming Control Board because people were getting mad that the Italian mob were rigging games in the casinos. They go, we need a way to police because you guys are gangsters and you're stealing our money. And they go, no problem. We'll put together an organization that'll keep us held accountable and the people go oh and now we feel so much better about it you know like what are you talking about you know what i mean so they the gaming control board by these are all like super regulated super official super legitimate departments and companies and they're public and billions of dollars it's all like legit all they did was they just wrote the law to allow some room for this so no one's breaking the law per se they just wrote the laws so they don't have to break them okay 